popular. You patrol upon us all these days and how you've helped us thus far. Lord, as we speak the word, we pray you speak to us. Change our story and bless us tremendously. Open our understanding and help us to get the best of life. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. You can please be seated. This morning I will be teaching on the stream of supernatural. The stream of supernatural. Now, when we clearly understand what it means by stream or streaming, we are talking about how to pass something from one level to another level. Like when the church started, I was not here. I was in the office. We were trying to see how we can put this together and stream the teaching how we can stream the teaching to the world outside what to hear what we are doing here this morning. And we try to fix everything, get the best right now. What we do now, we are streaming the teaching right now to the outside world to see what we are doing here in Africa, in Nigeria. Now, we, but we are preaching on the stream of supernatural. In other words, streaming the supernatural. What do we mean by, now we know what we mean by streaming, what do we mean by the supernatural? Something that is not natural. Something that is above the normal. Something that is beyond the human ability. That's what we mean by supernatural. Eight, Romans 8, 18 and 19, I read. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory we shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, God is waiting for our manifestation. You see, Christianity has been looked on as in the outside world as the weak people. People who don't talk. People who don't have power. People who can be oppressed. And everyone, everywhere, every religion wants to oppress us. Because they felt that, oh, we are, we are simple. We can dance to any situation. So let us oppress them. And because of this oppression, Christianity is dying everywhere. In Europe, Christianity is dying. They started Christianity. They brought the gospel to us. In the Western world, in America, in um, the other time I went to where a church where um, Mary Edward Etta preached in Canada. And when I looked at the church, and they told me they told me that that church where uh, Mary, I many of you have heard of Mary Edward Etta. Say so the church, if they look at the church on Sunday service, it's not really, it's not more than uh, maybe like. 10 elderly people there. And most of the churches are being sold. There's one of my, there's a church that was, they were to sell their building to another religion. This religion in the other side, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they want to sell the building to a Muslim. Uh, to build a mosque there. And it was so, so bad that Somehow God intervened. A church came and said, look, instead of sending this thing to this organization, this religion, we will buy it. And the church has to buy it. If not, the church was willing to process the agreement to sell it to that religion. Now you can see, everywhere, the, the, the situation is so bad that because we have failed in our responsibility, we have they look at us as the weak people, as poor people, as people who cannot talk. 
Because we are so covered with love. So the love that has to keep, keep us down. We have to, they have to, you know, hold us down by the word love. So that we don't come out to talk and we'll keep quiet. And they are pressing us. But then, with love, there's something we can do, but we fail to do it. And that is a supernatural. We are supposed to demonstrate this supernatural in such a way that even the unbeliever, they will be afraid of us. When they look at us, they will marvel who we are. They will be compelled to serve our God. The reason why other people are closing churches and some nations are closing and giving themselves to other religions is because they have failed to see the power in the gospel. They fail to see the power in the gospel. But if we, you and I, can be able to carry this gospel with power, we will affect our world. Teaching is very good. I do a lot of teaching. But the issue is it, teaching is for you who are already in the church. Teaching is to build the church. It's to build believers. But the power and the supernatural is to make the unbeliever see there is something in us that they don't, they don't have. And they will not come over to see what we have. And this is what we need to affect our generation. Now, imagine Jesus Christ came to this world, left behind 12 disciples, or maybe 11 disciples, and some disciples who have already run away because they felt their master is gone the long, longer. And eventually at the end of the one around 20 people were somewhere praying in hideout. They weren't coming out to pray. They were praying secretly. Now assuming they prayed and they came out and started going from street to street teaching the people one word. How many people would be able to impact going from place to place teaching. Knowing that they, these people have their own ideology, dogma, their own religion, their own belief. They are, some of them are Pharisees and Sadducees. They have their own. Now, can, can you imagine Peter going to teach them about Christ from place to place? How many can he win? Nothing. But look at when he came to the stream. And they were going to the temple, the usual temple they usually go for worship. Nobody, they don't recognize them. Nobody knows them. They just go there every Sunday or every Sabbath day or whatever. But this time, they saw the man at the beautiful gate. And they told the man, Silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, give unto you. The name of Jesus Christ who was crucified, rise up and walk. The man jumped up and walk. Were they not noticed after that? The people not followed them after that. It, re, it, nah, it was a manifestation. It was a show. I remember sometime when I was a school boy, I think a primary grammar school, I, they would call me to pray for sick people or maybe I hold some few meetings to pray for sick people and all that. I would tell the people, I said, look, my master was crucified openly. Everybody was seeing him. I said, I'm going to pray for these sick people. And I don't want anybody to close their, their eyes. I was a secondary school boy. I said, I don't want anybody to close their eyes. Open your eyes and see how good to pray for these people. And everybody will be stretching their neck. And we'll pray and the people will be healed and they will share testimony. Everybody will clap and celebrate. I said, look, I am doing this to let you know Jesus Christ was crucified openly. Let us disgrace Satan. What? Openly. Now, that is what I call the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, we are made to stream this supernatural to our world. Now, if you have not received the fullness and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or let me use the word, if you have not been born again, you can't experience this level. It's a new level. It's a new understanding. I, I discovered this day, the zeal, we, some of us have many years ago, the zeal on how we want to work for God, how we want to go to missions 
played and missed. Preached the gospel here and then. Had to affect life. People no more have it these days. The zeal to, for holiness. The zeal to fast and pray. I never knew what it, what we mean by fasting to and close it. Is it 12 o'clock or 4 o'clock or 6 o'clock? It was when I came to town here. I discovered people close fasting and as early as that. We do fasting from the close the following day morning. Because we felt that if we eat that day, we have not done any fasting. We close the following day morning. And that, that is it. Because we, 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 when we pray, we, we know we are praying. We're not praying and answering phone calls and chatting while praying. Not praying and you are watching television or all those kind of things. When you pray, you know you are communicating with God. Because the burden is high. But today, you see, nobody is talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. As a Christian now, when last did you speak in tongues? You say, well, I think, uh, that, I think last two Sundays when the church, when the pastor said, let's pray in the Holy Spirit. I pray in tongues. They don't pray in tongues. Nobody even have desire to bapt- get baptized in the Holy Ghost. No more, I, no more Holy Ghost camp these days. You know, it's, you know, you don't say we have camp meeting, Holy Ghost camp meeting. Everybody rushed down for the Holy Ghost camping, camp meeting. Because we're most desiring of the spiritual thing. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. We want the supernatural to flow through our heart. But when we talk these days about prosperity, wow, we want the money, money to come, and all that. And these are a, a shift from what we are supposed to do. I told somebody recently, see, don't look for the money. Time will come, the money will look for you. And, and, and that's the truth. You shouldn't look for the money. The time will come, the money will, I was talking to a pastor. So don't look for the money. Don't struggle for that thing. Time will come, the money will look for you. I told him, I said, look, back, back you know, you know, in North America, I was telling the person, I said, look, when you concentrate on your ministry, your ministry will produce everything you needed, every money you needed. So don't pursue the money now. Pursue the souls. And so that the soul will be won. Then the soul will vomit the money. You know, Jesus Christ was in need of some money to pay some tax. And what, what did they need? He said, look, cast the, uh, your hook on the sea and cast the fish. The fish is the people. They are different kind of people. They are people that you will catch when you bring them. Don't, don't be angry that such Mr. A came to, came to church and after about one or two weeks he left the church. No. Don't be angry. He came to vomit certain, certain money down. After that, he, is, he has done with the assignment. He may go. Jesus Christ did not say they should kill the fish and eat the fish. He threw the fish back into the sea. Remove the money. So there are people that will come that will actually do some job in vomiting the money. There are some who will, will definitely stay to help in the other work. Everyone have their own ministry. All we know, we are to pursue the purpose of the kingdom. Can you shout a big amen? And I want to let you know, every one of us to do that. The, 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 the zeal you have the, the, on the things of the kingdom will, will be what you will have. You see, if we are always looking at the, 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 the glamour of certain kind of experience, we will miss the reality. For us, let me give you an example. If you are always in the consciousness of certain area that the devil is everywhere. The devil is one that is chasing you. The devil, so every of your prayer and every of your activity is the, is the devil. You will miss a lot of things. You will miss a lot of things. To me, oh, where? Well, there is devil. But I have no business with devil. And devil have no business with me. So I don't need to turn all my prayer point to be what? Devil. I don't need to turn all my prayer to become warfare. Uh, in the in, in 90, uh, uh, my father-in-law here know Victoria Eto. I think you know heard about Victoria Eto in those days. Many, how I many of you have heard of Victoria Eto? You know that's a very long time minister. You see, uh, in those days when his books were all everywhere, that was in the eight, early 80s, 81, I mean 89, 81, 82, or all those kind. Of, his books were everywhere, and you see some of these young Christians bringing those books, say, uh, "Bro, Ennis, you know." You are in the deliverance. You are into this. You need to get to some of this book. And I, and I look at some of this book. I see a lot of names of demons and activities of demons. I say, oh, do I have to take time to memorize some of these things? 
He said, yes, because he makes you to be good. And I said, look, I'm, I can't waste my time in other stuff. I said, all I know is Jesus' name. That's all. If once I know Jesus' name, every other demon has to go. I don't need to know all the details and all these things. Listen to me. If you are carried over or deceived by certain area, you will miss the focus of your life. You will miss the focus. The reality is that what are you after? What are you after? What is your aim? What are you pursuing? Now, if you are in the supernatural, certain things don't count. For example, see, when I mean certain things don't count is that when you are in the supernatural, you don't count yourself to be alive. You count yourself to be dead. Even though you are alive, you are dead to Christ. If you don't die, you cannot bring forth. If you don't die, you must die. You must die to self. You must die to your personal ego. You must die to your personal pursuit. You must die to your personal ambition. You must die. You must let those things die. And there are things that are very technical, but many Christians and many of us are taking light on it. And these things are very, very important. For example, now, you see some of us who are Christian, we have been ruled by what we call anger and bitterness. And we felt that it is small. See, anger is not a small thing. Or bitterness is not a small thing. I'm not talking about you know, the issue of oh, somebody broke your uh, plate and say, why did you break it? You, you query the person and uh, you get, and I'm looking about that kind of, I mean that kind of anger that is on your heart, that affects your mood, affects your mind, affects your spirit, it causes a lot of trouble in your mind, and you break, break confusion. Rot, bitterness of heart, unforgiven spirit is as great as anything. And we can't go far in life if we are still controlled with anger, we get angry with church members, we are angry with the choir, we are angry with that one, and we, I mean, we will we, we show it, and the next time, you don't even, it shows on your mood. Your face shows you are angry. You, I mean, that anger is on you. you. You demonstrate it. If you are given to anger, you are not dead yet. And if you carry that anger and that bitterness and that sadness and that, and that unforgiveness, you extend it to the, in hours, you are not dead. It ought to go out as, uh, uh, it, if somebody offends you as it's coming, it's going out. It doesn't stay. And that, is, that means you, you are really good. You ought to die to self. Die in the sense that, that just like a dead man, if you pour water on a dead man, will he stand up to slap you? No, he will never stand up to slap you. You should die. If you want to be useful to God, you should die. If you really want the anointing, you should die. If you want to operate in the supernatural, you should die. I mean, I mean, really dead. To the extent that even you yourself, you know that you are a changed man. Hallelujah. Even your wife can tell this one is a changed man. Hallelujah. May God help us in Jesus' name. In such situation, listen to me. There are things that cannot survive in your body. Disease, Satan, demon cannot survive in your body. They don't have a way to stay in your body. They have to go. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says, Being confident in, of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. He which has begun a good thing. Take note of that word. What has he started? Yeah, he has begun a good marriage on you with you. That thing God has started, he will perfect it. Your business, you have started it, he will perfect it. Your ministry, your family, he will perfect it. Can you say a big amen? I don't believe God starts something and, and eventually it ends up in disgrace. When he starts something, he always makes it good. Whatever God has spoken to you, God is never a lie. If God has spoken something to you, he will surely fulfill it. He does. You are the only one who can, I mean, cancel what God has spoken about you. But for him, he won't cancel it. 
even if you mess up you make mistake or maybe you see you backslide when you come back realize and you come back to god again he is ready to continue that program with you again i mean to start again he won't cancel it you are the only one who can permanently dismiss it hallelujah now that means that you have the confidence that whatever god has spoken about you he will surely fulfill it there are things god spoke now, like when i was i was a young boy i was in school secondary school let me use another one because a lot of things I had a lot of revelation those days that i wouldn't forget i wouldn't forget i wouldn't forget that ah uh, no 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 i will that time was an explosive time during the second school days but i was so busy with the work of god until i couldn't make my five credit i was so i mean i felt bad that i couldn't make it well i have to make time to write it again but when i went to the campus i said now nah, i'm going to face my bible not too much of the preaching again <laughs> and i came out well that's why you see, let me tell you a lot of testimonies about school days, secondary school days, not when in the campus, because the campus I, I take from a few preaching engagement here and there and miss a few things. But there's something that happened to me that I know and I know and I know that God has hand and I see the evidence. Then I had a contact with Jesus and I told you a story over and over. And Jesus said this word. He said, when you grow up, Say, I'm sending you to preach the gospel across the nations of the world. Many of you have heard this from my man all over. over. Many years I've been saying it. Even when I have not traveled from here to Ghana, I have not even got anything called passport. I've been saying it. Mommy, you know that? And some of you know that. I've been saying it over and over because God told me that I am going to preach the gospel across the nations of the world. It was like play. Some few years ago, before I started traveling to North America on visit, on visit, I was only going to London and come back. Just London, come back. That's all where I used to go. I had a revelation. And that revelation was this. God told me that he is going to give me something so that I don't need visa to go to nations of the world. Mommy know about this thing. And I said, so, so in that revelation, I went into a place and they say, just line up that place. When you go there, they will take your passport there. They will give you something. So that when you want to go to a nation, you don't need visa to go. I, it was like play. In that vision, I saw, I told my wife, I said, what is that thing? Yeah, I did not even know what is called resident permit or this one much, much then. I know people travel, go to school, come back, but I never know much detail about it. So I told my wife, like play. But today, I've seen it come to pass. I've seen it come to pass. The other recent, some few weeks ago, I went to the, the American embassy called me and they, uh, they, no, we sent me an uh, information back in Canada and said, he said, oh, you've not got your passport, Canadian passport. He said, because you don't have your Canadian passport, take your uh, your." Um, I'll bring your Nigeria passport and um, give you, they give me 10 years visa to, 10 years visa to U.S. He said, you can be using this, your Nigeria passport, to any time you get your Canada passport. That if you get your Canada passport, you don't need visa again to go anywhere. And they put it on my passport, bam. Now, I, say, I, I looked at myself, I said, God, why is all this thing happening to me? And I remember, when I was schoolboy, I had a revelation. Before I started traveling to America. I had an vision. And I discovered that it is working towards what God told me years before I started traveling that He would give me something that I would never be travel to many countries that I don't need a visa, that, so that I don't need a visa to travel. Can you see what God is saying? Can you see the realization of what God is saying? God's word will always come to pass if you only you believe. So whatever God has spoken to you, I mean, stick to it. God will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this so that you can know that whatever God has revealed to you, don't give up. He will bring it to pass. I mean, He will bring it to you. God told you He's going to give you a baby. Be rest assured He's going to give you the baby. If God gives you, tell you He's going to give you a good husband, be rest assured. Sometimes we, look, we are looking for prophecy for, from people. Don't look for prophecy for people. You are a prophet. You are a prophetess. 
You prophesy to yourself. You prophesy to yourself. One day, many years ago, you know, I think that was in the 80s, 80, 83 or so. 83, 84 years. That was 83. Somebody met me and just took my hand. I, I never knew the man. He said, can I see your hand? I said, what's wrong with my hand? I thought was, maybe there's some dirt in my hand. He looked at my hand. Then he said, oh, I see something in your hand. He said, he said, I see that you're going to have a good marriage. I said, I don't need you to tell me that I'm going to have a good marriage. Do I need someone to tell me that I need a good marriage? I don't need someone. I said, I don't need you to tell me that I'm going to I said, I am born to have good marriage. It is my inheritance. It is my own personal inheritance. I don't, I don't need to look for it. It is already imbued and wired into me. I say, you are lucky you said what is right. If not, I will have slapped you here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now some of you, you they tell you something, you'll be crying and shouting and uh, you know, be, you have a dream, you'll be shouting and screaming, you have a dream and start looking for prayer because you had a dream for what? I walked in the SU, that was when they introduced the prayer. SU, I, I, you know, I looked back and said, I walked in the SU. SU, wow, traveling. Well, we're part of the SU, and uh, it's so amazing. Now, but the issue is this. Some of us, you see, because we don't know the supernatural, we are, we are, we are captivated by the strange voices around us. We are captivated. Can you imagine someone who had a dream, and you had an accident, and you want to travel? You had a dream, you want to, you, then you had an accident, say, Oh, accident is coming on my way, I won't travel again. Is that dream Bible? Is that the word of God? Even Paul, they told him, prophet, gigantic prophet, told prophet, Paul, say, don't go to Jerusalem, thus says the Lord. This is how they will do the person who wants this thing. Thus says the Lord, hey, why are you troubling yourself? Me, I'm not right. So I will go. So I will go. He said, God has said, but, said, but I will go. Did he not go? He went. You had a dream. You want to travel. You had a dream. Your Hannah says, I won't go again. Which one is greater? The scripture or the dream? No, answer. The scripture. A thousand shall fall by my side. And ten thousand by my right hand side. He shall not come near me. Full stop. Hallelujah. Then you travel. One of my... I remember one of my usher uh, told me one they want to travel to Nisha. I say, he said that um, he say, a, a renowned prophet met him somewhere. Say, you want to travel? He said, yes. He said, it was true. I want to travel. Tony said, yes. He said, good vision. He said, if you travel, don't go. There's death awaiting you on this travel. And he came to church. And he said, Pastor, look at what happened. A vision came. Oh, that I should not travel. That this is what's going to happen. I said, if you do not travel, you go to, I'm going to sack you. I'm going to discipline you from being my usher. I said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I mean, I said, I'm going to sack you. I'm going to dismiss you from being my usher. Jonathan is here. Jonathan is Jonathan, Pastor Jonathan is here. He knows the person. So eventually, he said, what? Isaiah, serious as they said, what about that vision? I said, look, I'm standing on the word of God. Not what you said you heard from someone. Or maybe what you dreamt about. So eventually, he looked and said, okay, Pastor, pray for me. I say, I am not going to pray for you. If you don't travel, I will discipline you. See you when you come back. I walked away. Because of fear of discipline, he took his bag and traveled to Nisha and came back. And when he came back, I said, I said, you are lucky. You will have known which one you follow. You will have known who you are following. Listen to me. Don't be afraid of anything that will terrorize you. You are a supernatural being. You cannot be touched. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't be touched. You are more than able. You are more than conqueror. Hallelujah. If you know who God has made you to be, you will walk tall. Hallelujah. You will walk tall. Praise the Lord. You will walk tall. You will walk tall. That's it. And I want to put a challenge on you so that you carry... You see, we are too much materialistic. 
And because of too much material things, we are not looking at the spiritual aspect of life. So I, I, I believe in balancing the equation. You know, but the issue is this. We are not focused on, on the power and the nature of God in man. We are not looking at that area. Tomorrow I'm going to teach my own area. I have an area I teach all around the world. And you know what I'm... Some of you know my area of specialization. I'm going to teach you that aspect. Tomorrow so that you can get an insight of some of the things I believe and something I stand for. My... I don't know the, my area of teaching anyway. So maybe if he's going to be around tomorrow, he's going to hear, know the area of my, my own area anyway. Well, the, the, the issue is this. Every one of us should know down deep in himself that you, you carry God's nature in you and you are untouchable. There is no need to be afraid of anything. You don't, you don't need to be afraid. Some of the prayer we pray is out of fear. You want to eat food? The kind where you pray on the food? Choose whether you are afraid or not. If I come to your house, you give me food. I'll give thanks and eat it. I don't care whether you put anything there. I don't care. I don't need to bother my... Oh, thank you, Jesus. As I'm thank you, Jesus. I'm taking it. Food. Whatever is there, neutralize. As soon as my hand touches it, it neutralizes. Because I carry current in my body. My clothes carry current. If I handle poison, it turns to water. Hallelujah. And that is who you are. Hallelujah. That is who you are. You should carry the consciousness. Don't carry the consciousness of devil. Don't carry the consciousness of sin. Some of us, we are too conscious of sin, too conscious of devil, that we don't know the power to save the power, the sanctifying power. I'm conscious of holiness only. I'm conscious of God's power only. I'm conscious of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Everywhere I go and wherever I start. And that's why I shouldn't be afraid. I shouldn't be afraid. Hallelujah. Many years ago, before this ministry started, somebody, you know, I got angry with someone. Holy anger, I mean. Not really bad. Holy anger. The woman looked at me and said, Pastor, I have been told, confirmed by one, two, three, that I cannot be pregnant. I have no problem if the doctor tells you that. But this one, he said, a prophet met her and told her he has seen a vision that she will never be pregnant. That was what angered me. Make me angry. If the doctor says so, it's proof on the result. But when it comes to a man of God, Try to tell someone cannot be pregnant by the visual revelation that it is all settled. It can't be, I mean, become because we are solution giver. No matter how hard it is, that is why you see we shouldn't speak doom from our mouth. Even when God says it is, it will happen. It shouldn't come out of your mouth. Are you hear what I'm saying? We are not. So I got oh, angry. I said because. This person says so. This month you'll be pregnant. I never knew what why it came out of my mouth because, because I came out of my it came out of my out of what anger. Do you know what happened? That month she became pregnant. Now we we should give life to people and not condemnation. Are you hearing say? Oh, I, I'm going to divide today's teaching into three subheads. I'm um, just uh, let me know. The introduction is taking too long. One. Um, um, the dominion nature of man two the downfall of man three the delegated power on man one dominion two downfall three delegated power now number one it, the dominion nature of man talking about some human race in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. This is what God given to man. See, uh, before this is before the fall. Man, God gave dominion to man before what? The fall. And the, the, the nature of man is to dominate everything. In other way, to so much control the, the things that are already created by God. So, in a way, God has put a man in such a situation where he is like the king of the kingdom on earth. Are you hearing? Do you understand something? Because he, 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 he has a supernatural knowledge. He has a supernatural ability. He operates in the realm of the physical 100%. And also operate in the realm of the spiritual 100%. He is a man, but carry the nature and the supernatural characteristic of heaven, of God. And God gave him dominion to rule, to take charge, to lead everything. As at that time, man is not even afraid of tiger, lion, snake. They are never afraid of it. They are there. They talk with them everywhere. When fear came into man, when fear came into man, even tigers started running after us. Snakes started looking for us. Because we are afraid. They discover we are afraid. And they started following us. They are currently attack us. Why? Because sin entered into the world. Now, when we look at this, we discover that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. That is what God has given to us. He gave us sound mind. Love. Power. And not fear. So with what God has done in man. Friends, listen to me. We are supposed to walk tall. But the devil stole it. Let me see. That's point number two now. When and through the downfall of man. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. Verse 4 and 5. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And I said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Do you know that one of the tricks the devil does is to question what God has said? It's a question. When you, the devil starts questioning you, on the word of God. Just know that that is the devil. Is it true that if I marry a sinner, I can convert him? I can convert him. Just marry that sinner. You marry that Muslim. Or marry that Hindu. Or well, marry that can, can Christian. I can do something about the person. And bring him to church. And he can even be a pastor. You know, you're questioning things. That's not the word of God. But the devil will put something in you. Is it true that I can do this thing and be, and be still okay? I can do it. Just try it. One, you see, once you do something once, you feel bad. Do it again, you feel bad. The more you do it, the less you feel bad. At the time, it will come to a time, the liberty is there. You will not feel bad again. You have, your heart has been given to see it. See it heart. Hard in heart. Sold. Now you discover Adam and Eve was deceived and we lost our God-given inheritance. The kind of knowledge we had, we lost it. We are now polluted by the knowledge of the devil. We now know 
the evil and will not know the good. And the evil is dominating the good that we have. It's polluting the good we have. And man fell into sin. And that is the beginning of sin. Now begin to invent some terrible things. Sin upon sin and multiplication of sin. And man becomes so miserable. We now know what is called sickness. We now know what is called disease. We now know what is called affliction, death, and all that. Verse 4 says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Can you see lies? Verse 5 says, For God know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Now, hear me. Please listen to this. The scripture says, I read that verse again, verse 5. For God know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Where his eyes not open. They were their eyes was open. But was he a good one? No. At least they opened. It was then they realized that they were naked. Before then, they were they don't know that we're naked. Oh, so oh, I'm naked. The consciousness of what sin came into. In other words, they were they were naked. Ah, they start covering themselves. That is the problem. The devil deceived them. But the good thing is this. Jesus Christ came to do something. To repair whatever the devil has stolen. He came, died. When he died, he gave his blood. Vicarious sacrifice. And he bought back. He is a second Adam. To repair all that has been stolen. Give us restoration. And what he gave to us was delegated power. And that's point three. The delegated power on man. Delegate is to transfer power to someone. That's what it means to delegate. To transfer what? Power to man. Look at your neighbor say, Neighbor, power has been transferred to me. Power has been transferred to me. By who? By Jesus Christ. He actually transferred power to you. And with this power he transferred to you, you are carrying the nature of Christ. So you can do exactly what Jesus Christ did. You can cast out devils. You don't need special training. You don't need special Bible school. You don't need special Bible school. You don't need special ordination. To cast out devils. No. To pray for the sick. No. You see, he has delegated his power so that we can function in the supernatural. You can function in the prophetic. You can function in the, in the healing, in the deliverance ministry. You can function in the demonstration of the spirit and of the power of the Holy Ghost. And that is it. Then, how do we possess the supernatural. One, you have to have a renewed mind. Look at your number and say, have a renewed mind. If, you don't, if your mind is not renewed, you can't operate the supernatural. You have to get a renewed mind. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 says, and be a renewed in the spirit of your mind. Tomorrow I'm going to unveil certain things to you. I'm going to unveil some certain things on my area of teaching, my line of teaching. You be, you see, you see, and be ye renewed. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. Have a renewed mind. Have a transformed mind. Have a sanctified mind. Have a child like a baby. Have a child like a new child, I mean, a newborn baby. That is how to attract the supernatural. If you know things too much in the negative, you cannot operate in the supernatural. Many of us, it is what we know that is destroying our life. What we know. Years ago, I was praying for two husband and wife. Both of them are HIV positive. One knew that it was HIV. The other one did not know. 
because the one that knew that has HIV, I prayed for that one once and the HIV became negative. The one that knew that it was HIV, it took me six months to pray before that HIV became negative. Now why? Because he knew. Until I said, please bro, from today, don't listen to any news, newspaper, internet, and whatever they say about HIV. Close that ash chapter and let it be a dead issue. Then he has to obey me and make sure he doesn't listen to anything. It was then he I started talking to him every week. Every week I will minister to him on that subject. Until then he got healed. Meanwhile, the wife had been healed and everything became negative. Now what am I trying to say? It is what you know, what you carry in your mind that is giving you a problem. So the Bible says, if you know the truth, what happened? The truth will set you free. It is the truth that you know that can set you free. But if you don't know the truth, you will remain in bondage. My people perish because of lack of knowledge or lack of vision or lack of revelation, as you may call it. So you must have a renewed mind if you want to possess the supernatural. Number two, you have to be a servant. You have to serve and not be a servant. If you don't, be, if you don't come down, you cannot go up. If you, you can't eat your cake and have it. Some of us want to be like this from the onset. You have to be like this in order to climb up this way. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to climb, you have to start somewhere. Praise the Lord. So you have to be a servant. If you can't be like a child, you cannot be a, a, an adult. If you can't be a good a, a child, you cannot be a good adult. See, God only honor and endure those who act like servants. If you serve me very well, I honor you. The same way, if you serve God very well, God honors you. How do we serve? You must be obedient. You must be loyal. You must be committed. You must not see fault in me if you are serving me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are serving me, you must not carry, I mean, you must not see fault in me. You must be obedient to me. You must follow me in order for me to reward you as a human being. As mean, we are working in a company. Am I right? The same way it applies to the things of God. If you truly want God to endure you with such power, such grace, and such, it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come just like that. You walk into it. You move into it. You step by step, you, grow, you, go into, you go into it. Hallelujah. So, you, 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 you have to be a servant. You have to obey God with everything. You have to drop your ego, your pride. You have to esteem yourself lower. I mean, you have to deny yourself of certain pleasures. Sometimes you have to act as if you know nothing in order to know more. Sometimes you need to... Do you know there are some people who feel, well, I can do better than that person. And if I'm one preaching now, I, know I would have seen three visions. And three visions, this one has not seen any vision at all. Oh, if I'm the one preaching in heaven, will, he, the way we, I was, this place will be shaking. People will be shouting, Amen. Vibration. No, it's not the shaking. It's not the vibration. It's not the shaking. It's not the vibration. I did those things in many years ago. I mean, in, <laughs> years ago when I, was, when I used to vibrate a lot. I, I, sometimes, he see, you know, now, I will stand on chairs. I'll be walking on chairs, vibrating and shouting. I will stop. <laughs> Mommy, you remember? Uh, on chairs, jump on the chair. From inside the chair, I'll be telling everybody, yeah, 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 everybody on fire. We don't have the fire. Some of them, after the fire, they go to their churches. They don't come back again. <laughs> they took up, after, with all the fire and the anointing, they will, the next time, they will be giving their testimony in their church and giving their thanksgiving, carry their yam to their church. I, they got the miracle here, but they are going to do thanksgiving over there. Because I keep shouting and jumping and see fire. But it changes when I start teaching the word of God from step to step. Mohamba said, teach the people. 
Some uh, pastor, someone came to teach the people. Keep teaching them. When I sit down, start teaching the people from step to step. I'm making them give them a sense, interpreting a little bit here and a little bit here. I'm breaking the scripture down in a way they will understand, not raising their emotion, because the emotion is not is not spiritual. They are not raising the emotion. Emotion is a kind of thing. But speaking word that will go into their mind, into their spirit, into their soul, the word begins to bring seed into their life. Even when they go back to bed to sleep, it is not the emotion stuff. It is the word that sings into their heart. And the people keep staying. People keep obeying. People, even if I'm not in town, they are following. Because the reason is because the word has been sold into their spirit, not in their emotion. Praise the Lord. Now, you see, that's what I'm saying. You have to be a servant and you must obey and you must serve. When I mean serving, you have to serve to the very point. You have to serve really deep. Serve as if you lost your mind. Serve as if you are a foolish person. If you don't become foolish, you can't be wise. If you think you know, you know nothing, you won't get anything. Until you become foolish, or you serve like a fool. You serve your church, you serve your pastor, you serve God like a fool, as if you know nothing. Then you can get something. Hallelujah. But you feel you know, you can't go that way. Life will be miserable. You must, have, you must pass through elementary school, before you go to the primary school, secondary school, and before you go, you must pass the examination. Before you go to secondary, you don't start from secondary university. You must start somewhere. Hallelujah. May God help you to be a good servant in Jesus' name. Philippians chapter two, Philippians chapter two, verse seven. The Bible says, "But made himself of no." Philippians two, verse seven. Write it down if I'm too fast. Philippians two, verse seven to nine. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him. The form of a servant. Who is that? Jesus. He took a form of a servant. And was made in likeness of a man. This is God. And being not found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And become obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Verse what? 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. And given him a name which is above every name. Every name, every name, it is from where he starts. It is from where he starts. You must start somewhere. Then God exalted and gave him a name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every name must what? Must bow. Must bow. You don't. I mean, you, you, you don't play with that name. You don't know. That name is, you see, if you like, bear the name of Jesus. And let them use your own name of Jesus to do anything, do nothing. Don't you know there are people that call Jesus today? Uh, do you know in the Bible there's somebody called Jesus too? It is not Jesus Christ. It's not our, but someone in the Bible, his name is also what? How many of you know that? Thank you. Thank you. But that Jesus, if you know his name is Jesus, if you do anything with that name, would it work? No, because the person who is calling the name Jesus in his mind is calling that Mr. Former, <laughs> his father's name is uh, Chukwe Meka, for example. Because all works in the mind. If I call the name of Jesus in my mind, which name am I calling? It's Jesus Christ. And that's how it work. But if eventually, I, it is not Jesus Christ that is in my mind, and I called Jesus, maybe it is Jesus of Onyibo that is in my mind. It don't give any result. What is in your mind? That Jesus is the supreme of everything. Is the high part of it. But he never. St he was born in a major. It doesn't matter whether you were born from poor background. Your poor background should not determine your end. I came from a very poor background. Very poor. When I mean poor, it's really poor. I brought light to my place. 
I brought light to my place. I mean, when I mean light, I'm not talking, I'm not talking electricity. Light I, I'm for my family. Because one thing I knew is that I had Jesus. And Jesus is the light. And if you have Jesus, you will show the light to everyone. May God give you that grace. By the reason of this meeting, may your eyes open to go into a new realm. Listen, many of us, listen, many of us, I, I say this clearly. I, I'm not supposed to say it, but I'll say it some other time. But yes, many of us, we are carried up too much talking and too much, uh, too much things. We don't, we don't reason. We don't reason. Or let me use the word, you don't think, or you don't meditate. Let me use the other word. Because reasoning, thinking, you know, so, so good. they are brothers. Meditation. Sometimes we'll be quiet. Be, be still. God say, be still. In the midst of stillness, there is power. We are too much in hurry. In the flamboyant things. I, 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 listen, I've made a lot of mistakes in ministry. That if I'm to start a ministry again, I will start in a different way. Because many years, when I started, I tried to be like anybody else. Oh, you, you did the same thing too. When we started, we felt, oh, well, let, let me preach like this one. Let me preach like this one. Let me shout and jump on chair. This one is doing it well. And I'll do everything like that. Eventually, I'll come back. Today, I have to be myself. Many years, I have to be myself. But the, the beginning, one, two, three years, you don't want to be anything else. Because what is on board? But listen to me. They, 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 they see, there was, they, they, they was, there used to be a time that my, the kind of suit I wore, how many of you know that kind of, I have all color of suits, all color of suits. You, some of you guys, you know, when, you know that time? All color of suits, call red, black, green, white, yellow, pink, wore all, everything you call color. So that if I come with this color today, tomorrow I'll come with another color, all cosmetized suits. I look at myself, say, what is all this thing? I look at myself, what is all this thing? Then I look at some people like Adeboye, Kumuye, uh, people that have already made a big impact in the ministry. I say, are they coming with a richy, richy color like me? <laughs> I say, no. I pack all, I dash them out. I say, let me come with simple thing. And even the simple one I come with is even more expensive than the one I was coming with different color. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I was showing up. But I'm learning. It's all mistakes. But I'm learning. Hallelujah. We learn from a lot of things. But my prayer is this. Let not, you should not learn from your mistakes. Don't. You see, somebody said, uh, uh, experience is the best. What? Is that what it says? Uh, it should not be your experience. You should not learn from your experience. You should learn from somebody else's experience. Because certain things, if you experience it, it's so painful. So painful. Let's, let someone else experience. That's why I like reading autobiography. Oh my God. If you see my Larry, I have big auto, big books. John G. Lake book, big what? Billy Graham, big autography. Uh, uh, Phoenix, big one. All these big, big autographies that. I was reading some of them. Some I couldn't finish. Some I, was, some I finished them, but I couldn't finish. Big, big autobiography. Because someone experienced, they wrote someone. Do, do you know what you mean by expatriates? Expatriate is someone who has done this thing over and over and over. He knows what, he knows the pros and the cons. He knows the error, he knows the mistake. You now bring it to be what? An expatriate. Because he has done that thing over and over and become a master of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now it's easy for you to follow an expatriate and learn from that person to become an expatriate yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is my prayer. Life will change. Our ministry will change. Our destiny will change. But one thing before I pray, please sit down for a while. One thing I want to say is this. Everything, I told you before, see one, Renew your mind to servant, servanthood and service. Three is sacrifice. Everything goes with sacrifice. Whatever you give, that's what you get. You give, you get back what you give. 
whether in money, if you don't serve, if you don't give your service, you can't get service. You can't, if you can't be a good servant, nobody will be a servant. If you are rebellious to who you are serving, nobody will serve you. So whatever you give, whether it's money, you get back. You must, the most expensive of your time, you must give it as a service to God. Your time. You, you see, time is the most expensive thing. You know that? Time is more is more expensive than money. Time. You can't regain time. You can lose money. You can lose money and get the money back. But once you lost time, you can't get it back. You cannot regain your, regain your time. So, if you truly want to be a part of giving quality service to God, you must give your time. If you can't give your time, you have never given your sacrifice. Oh, your money is good. We need your money. But your time is the most important thing. If you come to church this, on a regular basis, you come to church late. Now the question you will ask yourself, if you are working in the bank, will you come to church late? Sir, you have been a bank manager. You have been a bank manager. You, you were a pioneer. I think most of the states in the bank. Sir, do you tolerate or the bank tolerate coming to office late, sir? It's not part of the banking system. It's not back of the part of Okay, now, is it part of our system in church to come to church late? Huh? Never. But we do it without any iota of I mean, pain. And it's become a tradition. And you think God is happy with it? You don't give God sacrifice. And you go to office late all the time if your past, if your if your director will not be angry with you. And you come to church late all the time, God will be angry with you too. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked. God, God, God gets angry. Jesus Christ at the time got angry, got mad with those who are selling and, and he beat hell out of them and throw their changes away. Hallelujah. So, sacrifice, your quality sacrifice is demanded. Your quality. Of course, giving is part of the sacrifice. Your quality time in prayers. Your quality time in the, in the meditation, in studying, in reading, is, in doing things. This is if you truly want to. I speak for the weak. I'm an advocate for the young. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a child of covenant It's my time to laugh Cause I have conquered it all Impossible is nothing Impossible is nothing I am a champion I am a man.